So Friday's lesson was parallelograms and triangles, right? Parallelogram, you find the area by doing base times height. And triangle, you do base times height divided by 2. I'll do a little groundwork before we throw the answer out there. We do know that this is isosceles and right. So when a triangle is both right and isosceles, we know it's angles. Its angles are 45, 45, 90. So we know this follows the pattern x, x, x root 2. And we know the side we're given is the hypotenuse. Now, unfortunately, that says 6 root 7. It doesn't say 6 root 2. So to supplement that, <laughs> to um, undo x times root 2, we would need to divide by root 2 because dividing is the opposite of multiplying. Good. So to go from here to here, we're dividing. So 6 root 7 over root 2. Then we rationalize our denominator. We get 6 root 14 over 2, which would be 3 root 14. Very good. So that is both the base and the height. It serves as both of them. Okay, so we will do base times height divided by 2. So when we multiply that, we're going to multiply the integers first. 3 times 3 is 6. What's the square root of 14 times the square root of 14? It's 14, and we still have our divided by 2. So what is the final answer to this problem? No, I didn't mean to add. I, I, I multiplied. I just didn't multiply. You're right. So it is 9 times 7, which is 63. Uh, we don't have units, so we don't need to put units. 63 is the area of the triangle. And once again, 3 times 3 is 9, not 6. Mark answers. Oops. So this homework was called Parallelograms and Triangles. Let me know which ones you would like me to work. Okay, we're going to look at number 14 first. <coughs> so, in number 14, we have an obtuse triangle. You see how this triangle is obtuse? Hopefully you have your worksheet in front of you since I can't get it to zoom in. Here we go. So we have an obtuse triangle. And when you have an obtuse triangle, your height is going to fall outside the triangle. Your height is going to fall outside the triangle. Okay? So number 14, we just do base times height divided by 2. So in this obtuse triangle, this is your base and this is your height. There we go. Base times height divided by 2. So the side that we're not going to use is the 9.2. That is neither our base nor our height. It is simply a side length, and we don't need that to find the area. Okay? So that's 14. That's what happens when we get an obtuse triangle. Now let's look at 21. She wants to buy a large mirror from the wall for the wall from point P to Q. What's the maximum width the mirror can be? This is a really fancy way of asking what is the length of PQ. Really fancy way of asking. So literally, you just do the 22 minus the 8 minus the 5. Remember when you're working with figures that look like a lot of rectangles put together? You work with all the horizontal ones. And then you work with all the vertical ones. You never try to combine them. So you can even circle all the ones that are going horizontal. So you're literally just going to add 8 plus 5 and then subtract it from 22. It's like segment addition. Okay? So what was that one, 9 feet? If you're going to put a mirror on that wall, the mirror can't be wider than the wall, right? It's going to be a very large mirror if it's 9 feet wide. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be expensive. But anyways... Okay, so we went over the homework. Um, now I want to show you a fast.
faster way to find the area of an equilateral triangle. You're going to find the area of equilateral triangles a lot. And so if you want to memorize this formula, you're welcome to. If you want to erase this from your memory after I show you, you're also welcome to. This is not on your formula chart, so you would have to memorize this if you would want to use this in the future. They are beautiful, aren't they? Okay, so to find the area of an equilateral triangle, first you would have to find the height. Okay, this would be one-half S. That side is S, and this would be 60, and this would be 30. So what would be across from 60? Well, it would be the one across from 30, the one across from 30, root 3, right? 30, 60, 90. X, X root 3, 2X. Now we're going to do base times height divided by 2. And then we're going to clean it up and we're going to have a formula. A formula that you can use every time you have an equilateral triangle. Okay, s times s is s squared. Then we have our square root 3. He just kind of hangs out there. What's 1 half divided by 2? Good, 1 fourth. I'm not going to put the 1, I'm just going to put it over 4. And dun da 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 we have a beautiful formula. Well, it depends on who you ask if it's beautiful. We have a formula we can now use forevermore, and all you have to know is the side. So you don't have to go through the motions every time. So if I say, what is the area? Well, this one's going to be ugly, but let's just let it be ugly, okay? What's the area of that triangle? If you know that formula, you're going to be way faster than everyone else. Side, squared, root, 3, over, 4. 121, root, 3, over, 4. I'm done with the problem, and I didn't even draw a height. Make sense? Let me show you that formula again. That way you can write it down if you want to. But remember, you would have to memorize it. So, that's up to you whether you want to use this or whether you want to never look at it again. Today, we have three shapes that we're adding to our list. So get out your little piece of paper that has the shapes on it where we're keeping all of our area formulas. Trapezoid, rhombi, kites. So I'm going to show you where the area of a trapezoid comes from. Is this how you solve a problem when you're working it? No. I'm just showing you where the formula comes from because sometimes we're curious like, Hey, how did they come up with that formula? So, what I'm going to do to my trapezoid is I'm going to double it. Since I doubled it, since I duplicated it, at the end we're going to need to divide by 2, so don't let me forget to divide by 2. I'm going to rotate it. Okay. And now, what figure did I form? The outside. What is this? It's a parallelogram. How do you find the area of a parallelogram? Base times height. Now, let's tweak it so that our picture makes sense. Base times height. Now, this base is base 2, but then we stole this piece from up there, so this part came from the top, so that's base 1. Wait for the writing to go through. Okay, so the base of this parallelogram is base 1 plus base 2 together. You have to add these together to get the base, and then you just multiply it by the height. Base times height. But then remember, I duplicated it, so I need to undo that. Divide by 2. Base 1 plus base 2 times the height divided by 2. So that's where the formula comes from for a trapezoid. You can put the height first or put the height second. I kind of like the height second, but that's up to you. On your formula chart, you're going to see it like this. So I just want you to know, the formula chart's what you're allowed to use on quizzes and tests. And on your formula chart, it's going to look a little bit different. It's going to have that one half out front. 
So if you like multiplying by one half, that's great. If you like dividing by two, that works too. All right, try this problem. I bet they didn't ask you this problem in fifth grade. Don't worry, you've already learned these formulas before, but we're applying them in a way that's high school level, not elementary level. So hopefully by now you've all drawn the altitude, because that would be where you would need to start. X, X root 3, 2X. Hey, Chloe got the area. She got 100 root 3. Let's see. Oops. Sorry. Centimeter squared. Okay, so area would be base 1 plus base 2 times the height divided by 2. So do we want to tweak our answer? Yep, that's okay. I'm glad I'm not the only one who makes mistakes. So um, this would be 300 root 3 over 2. So that would be 150 root 3. And it looks like, what did you get for the perimeter? Let me scroll back up. 50 plus 10 root 3. Let's see, 10, 20. 30, 40, 50, yep. 50 plus 10 root 3 centimeters. We are never, we're going to continue to never combine radicals with integers. Never combining radicals with integers. So we just separate them with a plus sign and we don't do anything else about it. Do we put it in our calculator and get a decimal? No. We keep it exact, but we keep the radicals separate from the integers. Find the area round to the nearest tenth. Start to do a couple things. We know that to find the area, we're going to need a height. We're actually going to draw in both heights. Now notice that it says to round to the nearest tenth. So that's a hint that we're probably going to have to use trig. Uh, we have a 30, 60, 90 over here. So this would be, what, half of 44. And this would be 22 root 3. This is going to be 56. And over here, we're going to have to do trig. So to find this length right here, we have adjacent and high. Nope, we have tan. We have opposite and adjacent. Tan of 55 equals opposite over adjacent. We're not going to round yet, so don't round what you get to the nearest tenth. Denominator divide. 22 divided by tan 55. And I'm going to leave more decimal places than we need. We'll just do that. Now, this is tricky. To get base 1, well, base 1, we'll call it 56. To get base 2, we have to add up all three of those. But since we're allowed to round, we can add it all in our calculator. We don't have to keep it separate like we did for the last problem. So I'm going to take the number that's already sitting there. I'm going to do plus 56 plus 22 root 3. So I'm getting for base 1, 56. For base 2, 109.5. 0, 0,9 times the height divided by 2. If you can keep that long decimal in your calculator and just keep working with that one, that would be great. So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to add 56. I'm going to multiply it by 22. I'm going to divide by 2. Our Savior, good job. 1,820.6. Inches squared. A very large trapezoid. Let's move on. Find the height of a trapezoid with mid segment 12 and an area of 84. Rishi 1. All right, let's solve this. 
This was a key word to this problem. Key word. Do you remember from last unit the mid-segment of a trapezoid? This was on your quadrilateral family tree. It said a mid-segment. The mid-segment is the average of the bases. Right? That's what a mid-segment is. That's what, that equals 12. Well, take a look at your trapezoid area formula. The area of a trapezoid. Oh my goodness, look inside this formula. Do you see something there? The area of a trapezoid is really just the mid-segment times the height, which is really mind-blowing, but whatever. Okay, so base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2, that is 12. That's the mid-segment. It's the average of the bases. So the area, 84, is just 12 times h. Divide by 12, divide by 12. The height of that trapezoid is 7 inches. I'm not going to derive the um, formula for the area of a rhombus today. For time's sake, we're almost at 9 o'clock. But go ahead and write this down. This is the formula to how to find the area of a rhombus. Those D's stand for diagonal. So this area formula says diagonal 1 times diagonal 2 divided by 2. Now, in a rhombus, are the diagonals congruent? No. So they're going to be two different values, because then it would just be diagonal squared. Anyways, so diagonal 1 times diagonal 2 divided by 2 is how you find the area of a rhombus. Area of a square and then squish it a little. Okay, find the area of the rhombus. So we do know that in a rhombus, diagonals bisect each other because a rhombus is a parallelogram. So we can put the 6 here because we know that that's a midpoint. We also know that the diagonals are perpendicular. We were nice and we put that 90 degree in for you. So this is a Pythagorean triple, 6, 8, 10. So now we're ready to find the area. 12 times 16 divided by 2. For some reason, people want to try to add the diagonals and divide by 2. Make sure you know the formula is diagonal 1 times diagonal 2 divided by 2. 96 square feet. Wonderful. Move on. Is this formula new to y'all? I'm guessing so. Yes. New formula. Sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, it is a rhombus, so we can add 90, 90, 90, 90. That would make this 60. The 12 root 2 is across from 90, so I'm going to cut that in half. 6 root 2. That's going to go for both of those. And then we're going to multiply by root 3. So this will be 6 root 6. x, x root 3, 2x. Now, diagonal 1 is 12 root 2. It doesn't matter which one's diagonal 1 and diagonal 2. Diagonal 2 is 12 root 6, and then divide by 2. How in the world do we tackle this? Well, we work on just the integers first, the, the coefficients, so to say. 12 times 12 divided by 2. So 144 divided by 2. So I used up those. I got 72. Now I'm going to multiply my radicals. Square root 2 times square root 6 is square root 12. And now I do need to reduce this. So a 2 escapes and a 3 is left over. So now we're ending up having to double 72. We're going to undo it. So our area is 144 root 3. So we divided by 2, but then when we simplified our radical, a 2 escaped, so we ended up having to double it again. So we kind of undid it. 
Next is kite. The cool thing about a kite is that it has the exact same formula as a rhombus. Since his diagonals are perpendicular like a rhombus, I told you earlier they were like cousins on the family tree because they shared a property. So the formula for the area of a kite is also diagonal 1 times diagonal 2 divided by 2. No different at all. So that's good news. We don't have to keep track of another one. Okay, the perimeter's easy. Let's focus on the area. I made sure that these were Pythagorean triples. On your formula chart, it says rhombus. You're welcome to have the formula charts out every day, by the way. They're on the website if you need to print a new one. It says rhombus. It says one-half diagonal one diagonal two. But on the formula chart, it doesn't say anything about a kite. So you don't need to memorize the formula, but you do need to memorize the fact that a kite and a rhombus have the same area formula. You're allowed to use your formula chart on every quiz and every test. So tomorrow, you're allowed to use a formula chart. Okay, Pythagorean triples, 15 squared minus 12 squared. Take the square root and we get 9. If this is 12, this is 12 because of the properties of a kite. 20 squared minus 12 squared, 16. So diagonal 1 is 24, 12 plus 12. Diagonal 2 is 25, that's 9 plus 16. And then we divide it by 2. 300. The area is 300. I'm skipping perimeter. I think this is the last one. Goodness. Um, okay. We're going to make this the last one. So we have a kite. We have 30, 60, 90. We're going to put 5 here. 5 root 3. 5 here. And then, uh-oh, this is challenging. We have to do Pythagorean theorem. to find x. Be careful when you square 5 root 13. 5 squared is 25, and square root of 13 squared is 13. So 25 times 13. Oh, this is turning out nicely. So 300 would be what, 10 root 3? Can you square root it? So diagonal 1 is 10. Diagonal 2 is 5 root 3 plus 10 root 3. So diagonal 2 is 15 root 3. I'm multiplying here. Diagonal 1 times diagonal 2 divided by 2. Final answer. True, it is saying that we could just find the area of each triangle and add them all up. Sure, sure you could. Okay, yes.